Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Rohana, for this uh, valuable presentation. And uh, thank you, Ziad, for your uh, sharing your uh, story and congratulations. Okay. Uh, our next speaker is from uh, AUB. Uh, we start by Dr. Fadia Humaydan, Director of Office and Grant in, uh, in Technology, and then by Dr. Ibrahim Osman. And they are uh, going to tell us about what they are doing in university research and innovation at AUB. we do. So 
as I said, we protect the intellectual property generated. Uh, I'm not going to talk about intellectual property as I, as I heard that there will be a session on this, but intellectual property is only the protection, the patent path, path or the trademark path. We do validate with copyright. The UB has uh, given the copyright, the, the faculty members all their copyright, unless it's specific like a design or a software. Uh, and they need the copyright protection when we do it for them, otherwise we don't. Um, we try to facilitate the development of commercialization of technology, so we either find industry, and this is actually what we try to do at this stage, is find industry where we can license this technology very early on so that we can move the financial burden of the university to somewhere else. That's the reason we do this very early. It's not always, we're not always successful. It's very hard to find the industry very early on because they, everybody wants the protection to be in hand, to have a prototype ready to be taken to the next step. But anyway, this is part of what we do. Um, we try to attract industrial support. Uh, you know, we go on databases, we try to match what we have, the innovation with whatever industry is available or might be interested, we contact product development people in that company. Sometimes we're successful, most of the times we're not, but again, this is something we try to do. And then we generally, we do licensing when we find an interesting partner, we do licensing agreement and generate licensing um, This is what we do, I'm not gonna go through it, but you sort of know what, what our role is in this office. Um, the, most, the most important thing is we're trying to outreach to industry. The university has, already has links with industry, but we try to, our, our office, we try to link to industry specific industries, local and regional. And uh, Dr. Rad talked about the regional incubators. We do have some relationship with the uh, EUC Technology Council Office, which we're trying to work with now. They have the innovation center we're trying to work with. The, we, we work with the Hotel Science Technology Park, um, and actually one of our products is is being developed there. You work in the robotic surgery center. So we had we had licensed, I think, the uh, robotic surgery model or uh, product to them. And they are developing it with our professors, actually, hopefully, taking it to commercialization. And working with them is not an easy task. You, you think we have a bureaucracy here. You cannot even imagine how bureaucratic they are how late they are, they're delaying our agreement which has been approved by all legal councils in the world for a year now, we're still waiting to sign because they have internal issues and I think the efficiency, that's where the, the problem is. Uh, so it's not, you know, you have partners who are willing to work with you, who have the funds to actually support the project, but you know, they, they, they live on a different planet, I think, that's, that's our problem. But anyway, we need them, so we're, we're, we're carrying on. Um, we, try, we do uh, workshops at the university uh, to try to sort of tell people what we do, why we do it, what's the benefit to them, so that hopefully people do, you know, we buy into what we're saying. Um, all of this, by the way, is top down. So it started, it started uh, the university sort of found that this is lacking at the university level and the offices were created. And they were created because of the need in it, but from the fact that I guess, but it, it, the, the technology transfer was an initiative from the provost office that we had to go uh, through this to create here. Okay, so recently, recently we got to the startup company. So as again, Dr. Murad said, the universities uh, in general do not, I think it's in Lebanon mostly, uh, do not encourage the startups because I don't think there's a system. There's no model uh, and there's no system, and they cannot they cannot evaluate the professor on his staff. So this this took this took it at UB over a year, I think, till um, some some professors actually now are interested in startups. I might be jumping you know slides ahead of as well. So the university took a while to think about it. What happens if they do the startups? What happens to the job, to the teacher, etc.? So it takes a lot for the administration to actually take the time to think 
what's the benefit to the university, what's the benefit to faculty members, what's the benefit to the students, and eventually they see the benefits. So now we have, now we are at a stage that faculty members are allowed to have these startups. They retain, they retain their job at the university. We are actually uh, negotiating with upper administration to allow the faculty members to take two days per week off to work for their company instead of the one day per week. So that's that's the only difference that they are well allowed one day before now they're negotiating for two days a week. Uh, they would be allowed to obviously to hire students, actually they're in college to hire students. And we so now we have some some group of faculty members who are pushing the envelope. So they, they are now excited about it and they're pushing the administration. They're always knocking on the doors of the VP for legal, on the provost door, on our door, on whoever is available. When can we register? When can we incubate? When can we get give me the money to do the business plan? So they're forcing us to work faster, which is which is actually very nice. I'm incubating in very <laughs> So our incubator is going to incubate in very <laughs> Okay. So the resources we have are, they look great, uh, but they're still limited. We have an annual budget. Now we are part of the, at least we have a budget that we can actually help protect uh, intellectual property, help invite speakers, help some gap funding. We have very modest gap funding that if we identify some uh, technology, that needs to go to the next step to, to a prototype, there's internal money that we can actually apply to. It's not a lot of money, but it might be enough, it's enough to take it, you know, one step further for the technology to go one step further. Um, the Dervada Center, I we partnered with the Dervada Center during Ghali times and during the Tel as a team, and we're carrying oh, on yeah. now, and we're carrying on now whether whether the people there like it or not. We're getting one. So they will help us with the entrepreneurship uh, courses, training, they're working on the vetting and evaluation of the proposal when it comes. They will be working with students on the competitions. So uh, this part, which I, I, I am, I'm a physiologist by training, so I'm learning entrepreneurship along with the students at this level. We do have local and regional partnerships. Um, as I said, we do have, um, uh, gap, some gap funding. We just got approved to start the Center for Research and Innovation, and we're hoping to launch it at the beginning of the year. And this Center for Research and Innovation will be the center for UB faculty and students and alumni to incubate their companies. So this will be only UBs for now. And as I said before, within a year, we're hoping that we will open a bigger uh, facility for them. So we, we, we got approved to hire commercialization and marketing experts, and that will be, be important actually to take the technology to the market or to license it. And we're working on the formation of the what we call innovation part. So we have uh, we're working now on the intellectual property advisory committee, and this is the the, the IP will change because it will become the Innovation Center Advisory Committee and later the Incubator or the Innovation Center Advisory Committee. But this is the advisory committee, the most important role is to actually assess this technology coming into them or the proposal for the startup coming into them. So we, we started, so we're going around actually identifying members of this advisory committee. We're also working on um, forming an advisory board for the center and hopefully eventually for the Okay. Now, the challenges are for everybody. They will be the challenges for the committee and they are currently our challenges. The minute we get the technology in, in the door, we have to decide, is it, is it worth paying the money to patent and to protect? And that's the biggest challenge we have. We form an ad hoc committee, usually I get experts in the field and the business people to actually assess this technology quickly. Yeah, it's worth patenting, pay the money. So we do, but because money is limited, we are limited also in the number of patents that we actually can take all the way through. So these are challenges, they're always the same. We have to go through them every time. Sometimes 
the, 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 the challenges don't seem that big if the technology is so great, so we carry on with it. Okay, uh, this is something that we keep telling researchers why they should actually be part and participate in the technology transfer process. Um, obviously, to make, hopefully to make a positive impact on society, to feel a sense of personal fulfillment. The amazing thing is once a professor or a student actually go into this route or to this path, as, as, as uh, yeah. Ziad, Ziad said, you say, what was I doing before? Everything was irrelevant. The minute they get into there, there's so, so much personal fulfillment that they don't want to go back and just sit in the lab and write, and write the paper and send it. You know, I used to love getting uh, you know, the American Journal of Physiology, for example. Great. But now, because now I'm living a little bit that, I'm more excited, I think, than the faculty numbers that we face. I wanted to, to do this setup. So obviously to achieve recognition of financial reward, and hopefully we only do it if there is a, at the end of the year there is a financial reward. Um, the money that will be generated will be uh, added on to the research fund in the university or in the company, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we have research contracts, and we did actually start up, a, one of the companies was started up because of the research contracts, so that's what it worked as well. And you know we uh, pay education opportunities for students and bring students to future job opportunities. So all of this is, is good news. So what have we done at UB so far? All of this we're doing, but we have you know we're doing more. We amended the intellectual property policy. We are now which is implemented already. Um, in a nutshell, everything that's made on campus by grants given to the university is owned by EDP, but and the professor has to assign the rights to the university, but all profits out of this innovation is shared between EDP and between the university and the inventor uh, and the department of the EDP. So this is already implemented. The IP advisory committee, as I said, the advisory committee is being now formed, and whenever we need somebody, we just call the people to help us uh, assess the technology. We have subscription to paint and database, so whenever it is up, the technology comes through the door, we actually look to see if it's novel, it's usable, whatever, to actually carry on. I told you we have got funding, we have a technical lawyer now, we have many lawyers in Lebanon, but we, it took us a long time to find a specialized technical lawyer who is now uh, engaged with the UV. But since 2008, when we had only this one, uh, we have 57 disclosures. We have uh, one trademark which has been issued. We have 75 material transfer agreement. Our office is also involved in material transfer agreement uh, signing and preparation. We have non-disclosure agreements, and we are dealing with now 22 licenses. There are a lot of technologies which we do not even patent. The software, as I